Hello and welcome to another tutorial video of basic fishing. Today I thought of doing something a little different and talk about the basics on how to make your own burley so that you can understand on the concept on how burley is made as well as using it properly. Hope you learn a thing or two in this video and I hope you enjoy watching this video on how to make burley for fishing. will ask what is burley? Burley is a mixture of minced up fish that is used to attract fish. It's also known as chum to some fishermen. There are many types of burley available. There is skipjack tuna, pilchard, mullet, mackerel, shellfish such as kinner and mussel, and the most expensive salmon. The main point when burleying is to maintain a consistent trail of smell and small bits of food drifting in the water. And this helps to attract fish when fishing is hard. Adding burley in my fishing spot really gave me a huge advantage. And I managed to catch a lot of fish. Like if you see these pictures for example. All of these fish were caught with the help for my burley trail. And not only did I catch a lot of fish. But I also managed to um, catch the big ones as well. To start things off I recommend buying a burley from the tackle store. And trying it out on your fishing. So that you can understand how burley works. To give you a quick tip on how to deploy burley, here is a simple illustration I made for you to see. And this is how I use burley whenever I get a chance to use burley when I go fishing. And I use this method to help me to cover a lot of ground when fishing off the wolf. Off the wolf, I usually have two burley bags with me. One is for the surface and the other is to go to the bottom. By burling this way, I'll be able to cover a lot of ground meaning that I'll be able to target fish both from the bottom and the top. And here is another illustration to be aware of. In this image, I've shown you how sometimes the current can push the burly trail off in one direction. And in this area is where you need to cast your line because the fish will usually gather around that area for a simple feed. Also, small fish are the ones that are confident enough to go close to the burly bag. The bigger fish are usually wary and will stay back away in a safe distance, lingering around and search for an easy meal. If you are interested in making your own burley, here are the main ingredients required to make your own burley. First of all, for fish based burley, you can't use any fish by random. You really need to use oily fish, such as mullet, mackerel, pilchard, salmon and skipjack tuna, also known as bonito in the market. The fish market usually provides you with a lot of fish that can be bought both for eating and for the use of bait. So they are usually the best place to go to get what you need. Another way of course to get the fish you need for burley is you can use the ones that you've caught. The leftover frames are great to use as part of the burley mix. Plus leftover baits that is too soft or too old such as pilchards and bonito. Now another ingredient you need is chicken feed. Both the mash and the pellets are great to use to make your own burley, but I personally prefer to use the pellets. And finally an onion bag to put your burley in when fishing. This is super easy to get as well as easy to store away and clean to use until it is no longer useful. I used the same onion bag for my burley for well over 2 years of my fishing and it was only recently that I had to change it due to the damage caused by sharp barnacles. So here is a simple demonstration on how to make burley. Before starting I recommend you do this away from the house because this process is messy and be careful when making burley because you will need to use sharp knives and the last thing you want to do is hurt yourself and for children who are watching do not try this at home. But remember this is a basic way on how to get started on making burley. To start things off, I got myself a large tuna and at the moment it's defrosting. The reason why I want it to be defrosted is so that I can cut it into bait sized pieces and apply rock salt on it and this will allow the bait to be a lot tougher. After getting everything that I need for bait, all I am left with is the excess meat, the head, the frame and the gut cavity. To start things off, I chop up all the excess meat 
frame and gun into very tiny pieces. Remember, always be careful when using sharp knives, and I have to sharpen these knives quite regularly. After getting all the top pieces, I simply put it into a bucket that is filled with water and mix it around. What this does is that the water allows all the juices and the meat to be diffused into the water. After a while, it should look something to look like this. I had 4 frames of skipjack tuna in total, and I had all the juices, blood and oils diffused into the water very easily. To add another bonus to the mix, I got some tuna oil and I added some drops into the mix. Now I just simply add chicken pellets into the mix. The chicken pellets simply absorbs all the moisture and it should look something like this afterwards. The benefit of using chicken pellet is that when it's thawed out, the juices of the fish don't go all over the place since it has already been absorbed into the pellets and the pellets break apart into the water, leaving a good consistent trail into the water and drifts very well in, into the water attracting a whole range of fish to the area. Now all I do is simply pack the burley into small bags and the amount I put in is usually up to one and a half kilos. This is a reasonable size, not too heavy, which allows me to carry as much as I need and this prevents burley being dispersed too much or all at once. After packing them all into bags, I simply store them into a box and then into the freezer to get them ready to be used in my next fishing trip. Now here is a test footage on my homemade burley. As soon as I arrived to my fishing spot, I threw in my salmon burley into my onion bag and started to get the burley trail going. Since it was frozen solid, I took a little time for it to work. But after a while, I gave it a little shake and also gave it a good stomp to allow the bits and pieces of the burley to be released a bit more easily. The benefits I had with using salmon burley was that the flesh was very visible and this allows them to be seen very easily by the fish. It's also very very oily as well and if you look closely in the footage here, you can actually see the oil slick drifting onto the surface. So while the oil slick drifts around the surface, the chicken pellets slowly dissolve into the current and this allows fish that don't venture above the surface to gain attention to the burley trail. So while the oil slick drifts around the surface, the chicken pellets slowly dissolve into the current and this allows some fish that don't adventure above the surface to gain attention to the burley trail. While some fish are wary and stay away from the burley bag, other fish are very bold enough to swarm all over the burley bag. And as you can see, I think these small fish are eating all of the burley before they could even drift down into the current. It's funny how a simple scent trail in the water can attract this many fish in a short period of time. Here I got a whole pilchard and I squished it to allow the juices to burst out and bits of flesh started to drift down through the current. Only a few seconds later, one mullet popped out of nowhere and after one turned up, a bunch more started to swarm over the pilchard and began to gulp their way into the free food. With any burly in the water, it won't be long before the entire school of bait fish will swarm the area, which will make it easier to catch fish. And depending on the day, you could be in for a better surprise, whether it is a kawaii, snapper, kingfish, stingray, or shark. I hope this video has helped you, and thank you for watching this video. And if you're interested in seeing my other tutorial videos that I made, please check them out. Again, thank you for watching. And I hope to see you next time.